Peace everyone, and thank you for coming back. Last time we found out, that Pharaoh dynasty, were not the ones, who built the pyramids. Yet they were built, by Soliman's jinns. In Zura, history, or year 28, the Arabic Goron says, Pharaoh said to Haman, light me a fire upon the clay. Then make me a structure so by the means of accessing to the heaven, I could take a look at the god of Musor. I think he is liar. Also this or yeah, has been repeated in Zura 40, or Yat, 36 and 37. Therefore, the scientifically proven Arabic Goron, based on mathematics, the exact science, proves to us, that, the pyramids were not built by Pharaoh dynasty. And, they did not have any idea how to build buildings from heavy stones. Yet, they used to lay the bricks out of mud, then, they let them dry in the heat of the sun, and then they bake the bricks in the oven, in order to make them stronger. Thank Allah, for not leaving behind anything in his Arabic Goron. Shaitan wiped out the history of his constructions, and whispered to us, that Egyptians built them, as he inspired to so-called Egyptologists. These people have been frozen in time. They think, that those huge pyramids, were built by Pharaoh's dynasty, and they were built by only, chisel, and lumps of rock. They are so funny. Also, Shaitan whispered to some, that extraterrestrials, built them. Or, a lost civilization built them, or some say, that they were built by gods, or they were built by unintelligent civilizations, and so on. Intelligent civilizations is correct, because, jinns are much smarter than us. And, they are. The extraterrestrials. One of the reason is, that Allah did not make them to forget, like what he made us to do. Therefore, they carried their knowledge with them, when they came down to the earth. And we are witnessing on YouTube, that how so many people fooled by Shaitan. They have been trying so hard to duplicate the builders but in vain. Shaitan is just doing what he is supposed to do. Misleading people. What happened was, that when Pharaoh and his dynasty became rulers, they used those constructions, as their burial sites. Because, they could not live inside of those pyramids. The ancient Egyptians were preoccupied by death, and they believed in afterlife. And that was a place of complete bliss. They taught, after death they would go to the dark and terrifying place called the underworld. The underworld was a land of great dangers, and various tests, through which every Egyptian would need to pass before passing into the afterlife. If the person successfully passed through the underworld, then they would enter the afterlife, and live for eternity in a perfect life. Maybe that was why, they chose underneath the pyramids, for their burial places thinking inside of the pyramids, and underneath them, would be underworld. And their dead bodies, would be safe, and it would last forever. That is why they were mummifying their bodies. The reason they were taught how to mummify their bodies, was because, Allah wanted them to preserve Pharaoh's body, so we could see his body today. As the Arabic Goron says. So pan Allah. The Arabic Goron says. They were a bunch of godless people, who wanted to destroy the nation of Abraham. But, Allah sent Musa in order to save the children will be transported by Allah. So, Allah moved out the nation of Abraham from Egypt. Here is another proof. Any ruler, first will build a mansion for himself, in order to live in. And to show his power on earth. Instead of building a grave for himself. Just look at today's rich people's mansions. Pharaoh did build his mansion, but it was made of flimsy, clay bricks, and it was destroyed through the history. That is why, in Zura 26, Allah says, they left behind, treasures, springs, gardens and high positions. It does not say, mansions, and palaces, or buildings, nor pyramids. Therefore, again from the scientifically proven Arabic Goron, we have proofs, that Pharaoh dynasty, did not have to do anything with those pyramids. The other proof is that when you look at those holographics and pictures on the walls, which they left behind, 
you would not find a single picture of a pyramid. Again that means the pharaoh dynasty did not know anything about the builders of pyramids. Yet, Egyptologists are insisting that pharaoh dynasty built those pyramids. Now, let us question the Arabic Quran again. Why? Dawood, and Soliman, did not build any mansions for themselves, out of the mountain and heavy stones? Do you know why? The reason is, because, Allah asked them to work. Meaning go around the world and spread the message. This shows another proof, that they should not have to just sit around in one place. As we read in the Arabic Quran. The other proof is, when those two brothers, they climbed over the wall of the chamber, and entered to Soliman, he was startled. It does not say, they entered his home, or room, but, it just say, they entered to Dawood. That shows again, that he did not have any palace. Let us look at some more engineering mystery. Just look at these cuts from 3500 years ago. Now, we can only make such a cut with our modern machine tools. Even today, no one could do that by hand. They have found 40,000 plates, and vases, beneath the one pyramid. They were made of stones, harder than steel. No one knows how they carved inside of those vases so smoothly. They made a strange object, which we call it, disc of Sabu, and it was made of metazilt stone. This trilobed bowl, has a maximum diameter of 61 centimeters and a maximum height of 10 centimeters. And no one knows what is it? And what they were doing with it? Also there are some stones, right outside of the pyramid, which no one knows what they were doing with those stones. We used to think, that, pyramid has only four sides. But, the outside of the pyramid has eight sides, instead of four sides. That was, when a picture was taken by night. This happens only a few seconds, twice a year at the equinox. That is, when the length of a day, is equal to the length of a night. This shows again, that jinns knew about the length of the days and nights, and they were signaling to us, about the equinox. We talked about the speed of light in the last tape. Here is another sign. Using Google Earth. We can measure the exact latitude of the center of Grand Gallery, inside the pyramid. It is 2,999,792,458 degrees north. Which again, it is exactly the speed of light meter per second. Therefore, jinns knew about the speed of light, meter, time and seconds. And they knew exactly, how to measure, the latitudes and the longitudes of Earth. Here is the satellite image of the Great Pyramid, at the time of the equinox. That means again, that they used to live in a place like the Earth, with a spherical shape. Now, let us go inside of the Giza Pyramid, and take a look at those chambers. Here is the map of the chambers, inside of the Great Pyramid. The entrance is in there, north side of the pyramid. You have to go up, in order to get to the main entrance. The entrance slopes steeply down. And you have to bend down double. It was cut through the solid rock. After 33 meters, you get to the first, ascending passage. Now, if you continue going down to the subterranean chamber, which is located underneath the pyramid, you have to go down another 72 meters. The total distance from the entrance to the subterranean chamber, is 105 meters. Let us go down to the subterranean chamber. There is a descending corridor, cuts into the bedrock for a distance of about 30 meters, under the base of the pyramid. Before turning into a horizontal passageway, which runs for about 9 meters. As you see here, at the end of this passageway, there is an unfinished niche, and a rock cut chamber. The first noticeable thing about the subterranean passage is, that it has the appearance of being unfinished. The southern passage was in the process of being carefully cut, and adds to the idea, that work was stopped in the middle of the chamber. The obvious question is, why as it was left unfinished, when it was such an obviously original feature of the pyramid. A further unfinished corridor, leads from the south wall, for just over 16 meters, and there is a square shaft, on the east wall, 
which descends for about 5 meters. The shaft is filled with rubble, but apparently descended for about 18 meters when it was cleared. Now, let us go back up, and from the descending passage, we go to the ascending passage, which is about 28 meters long. And you would not see any grooves. That means they drilled through solid rock. Even if it was a block of rock, it should be 28 meters long. At the end of the ascending passage, you can either go to the Grand Gallery, or you may go to the Queen Chamber. Let us go to the Queen Chamber first. Which would be another 39 meters going straight. The chamber itself, is made entirely of beautifully finished limestone blocks, with a gabled ceiling. It sits on the 25th course of masonry, on the pyramids, east-west, axis. The walls are bare, and uninscribed, but there is a niche, in the east wall, about four and a half meters up from the floor. That would be inside of, that big red, circle. The niche also has a corbel ceiling. The gabled ceiling, and the corbel ceiling, was to redistribute the load in queen and king chambers. The R2 air shafts in the queen's chamber, were originally, bricked up. I marked, one of them, with a small red circle. Averaging about 20 centimeters square, they rise from the north and south walls of the chamber, and climb steeply, up through the masonry above. The shafts are not entirely straight. The north shaft bends after about 17 meters, possibly to curve around the grand gallery. Similar shafts can also be found, in the king's chamber. They send a robot, in order to video the inner walls of the shafts. They found out, that the southern shaft, ended, with a small Tura limestone slab, in which two heavily corroded pieces of copper, had been inserted. The door is estimated to be about 6 centimeters thick and is only about 6 meters from the outer surface of the pyramid. Again they sent a robot, to the northern shaft. They discovered a door, just like the southern shaft. The doors are equidistant to the queen's, chamber. No one knows what is behind those chambers. And what is the main purpose of those shafts? I think at the right time, Allah will let us discover what is behind them, and also the main purpose of these shafts. We must realize, that we are looking at the construction in the past, which was built with the knowledge of future generations. That means, we are going to acquire more knowledge, about the pyramids, and their builders, as we travel through the time, in order to understand the techniques, and purpose of the pyramid builders. Let me remind you, that rock carving cannot be accurately dated. That is why they are all guessing about the date of building the pyramids. Here is a new revelation from Allah. As you have heard from the Arabic Quran, when Saba received the letter, from Soliman, she consulted her, noble ones, her chiefs, councilmen, or advisors. Or, when Pharaoh asked his advisors, what to do with Musa and his brother. The noble ones said, give them a chance and send to cities in order to bring you the knowledgeable magicians. The word, Malai, in Arabic language, means, the noble one, the great one, council, leader, advisor, or elder. These are the people, who are mostly elder, smarter than average people, with more experience, and knowledge. That means, the king, or the president is not able to make a decision, and do not know what to do anymore. That is why he asked them what to do. As you know, when Soliman talked to that hoopo, he was kind of harsh, and disrespectful. But, when he wanted to bring Saba's palace, he called the jinns, as Malai, the noble ones. Allah is informing us, with this only one word, that jinns were much smarter, knowledgeable, and they had more experience, than Soliman. That is why he talked to them with respect. Allah be glorified. Today, we only have a very little information about how, and why the pyramids were built by Soliman's jinns. May Allah give us the knowledge in order to understand the engineering technique of the builders, and the purpose of their building. Until the next tape, with much more exciting hikmat from the Arabic Quran, peace.